Hello, I'm Gary Willock. Welcome to Exteriors. Today we're going to be talking about porcelain tile. Actually, it's porcelain pavers. Uh, the difference in tile and pavers is tile is typically a quarter inch, three eighths inch thick at the most. Pavers are actually three quarters of an inch. And then if you have um, extreme areas, higher areas, uh, some of the porcelain that we use has a backer on it that adds another good eighth of an inch. So you're really looking at close to one inch thick for the pavers. Porcelain is a wonderful product and I'm reaching over here into my back of my truck to pull out some porcelain pieces so you can actually see them. This is a porcelain paver sample. It's only four inches by four inches. The tile that we're gonna be looking at today is actually 12 inches by 48 inches. Actually, it's one foot by four foot um, from the center of the joint to the center of the joint. So it's actually a little bit less than that. I think it's actually gonna be this color. Uh, let me look on the back of this and see. No, it's actually, that's just a shade different. There's a lot of different colors. And as you can see, a nice wood grain on that. I'm just gonna pull out a few of these just so you kind of have an idea. Here's another one that's a little bit different and every one of these are gonna be a little different. We just recently did one that was more like this, kind of a taupe look, kind of a stone look if you would, no grain to it like wood at all. A lot of different things. And then you can get them with a lot of color also. Uh, this one actually not only has color, but I'm trying to turn it sideways here so you can see it's got a really nice texture for it. All of them are skid proof, so you're not gonna be worrying about slipping even if it is totally wet. Now, let me pull out one. I think this is the one that we're actually doing on this deck here. So you can actually see before you actually see the large part. We're going to be talking about it in depth, but let me just show you a couple more. Here's a nice one that's got some sparkle to it. I don't know if you can see the sparkle. I hope you can, but it's absolutely amazing. Not sure I would want that for mine, but it could fit the right spot architecturally. So uh, everything has a need. Here's one that's much more, again, like stone. The other one a little more like concrete. This one's a little more like stone. On the back of these, this is very typical of what you would see on the back of a paver. This gives it a little bit of assurance that if it breaks, it's not gonna to separate too much, but it's limited on what that would actually do. Let's look at a couple more, uh, just to see if we've got something very unique that uh, I haven't shown you yet. Oh, here's one. Again, I've got a whole box here. This is just an inkling of what you can get in the porcelain pavers. Look at this, this is really nice. Now the part, nice part about porcelain pavers is, you know, we got some rust on them um, on a project and you know, the rust had sat there and, and did its thing, rusted out. There was some metal shavings around some of the posts and um, that rust just comes right off of these things. So it's amazing how tough they really are. But we're gonna share with you today on this video uh, what porcelain comes like, how it gets delivered, what kind of equipment you're gonna to need to unload it, what kind of space it takes to store it while you're getting it where you want it to go. And it is a heavy product, so that's something you need to be aware of. And we're gonna show you how we deal with the edges and put a porcelain paver on, on pedestals. That means it's elevated above the water membrane. We use PVC, 80 mil, um, 80 mil PVC for the membranes, basically a roof product, and we use PVC coated drip edge, and we inset that. So we're gonna be talking about all of that in this video today, and I'll try to touch on all those parts, but keep in mind, porcelain is the future of decks because it just stays the same. No maintenance to it, uh, it's very rare that you'd break one and being on pedestals, if you did, it's so replaceable. And the nice part, the fade on these are almost none at all. So if you replaced one 10, 15 years from now, you would not really be able to see that there was a difference from the new one to the old ones that were there. So you can really service these decks. So you wanna get a good membrane underneath and with the 80 mil um, PVC, and on the deck that we're talking about, it has a complete deck roof on it. So there's really nothing that's going to be accessing the actual PVC. The UV rays will not be an effect on it. So that's gonna last for years and years and years and years to come. Probably uh, a couple of generations uh, could live in this home without a problem. So let's get into how we do the deck, 
I'll show you the deck, we'll show you a lot of tile around the deck, we'll show you how we did the steps going up, put those on steel, and uh, a lot of different parts to the porcelain pavers for decking. This product, I believe, is here to stay. If you look behind me, what you're seeing on this deck is porcelain tile. It's absolutely amazing product as far as the way it looks, uh, how strong it is. The only negative side, it is heavy. You want to make sure you have a structure for it. Uh, but with that exception, it, it definitely is a product that anybody is going to like. Now, I'm going to turn the camera around here, show you some up close, and then I'm going to show you an actual piece of it. Uh, we have two types on this. Um, as we get close to the edge, uh, the, the, the actual tile is laid level. There is a slope, a hip roof, if you would, beneath the tile that drains the water off in all four directions. That's the way we built it. We wanted that water to go off gently, not have gushing water at any one place or any one slope. With that in mind, uh, we have a tile that as it gets closer to the outside is higher off of the decking than it is in the middle. And what that does is um, increases the risk, if you would, uh, and the potential of having something go wrong. Let's say somebody was on that tile and somebody had dropped something very heavy on it, like another porcelain tile, before that person stepped on it. You don't want anybody being able to step through your deck and injure themselves. So what the company came up with, and we're using this tile from Embrico, and they've got, I, I love their patented backing idea. There's a lot of them out there. Some of them create a lot of work for you in the field. This one makes it easy. So let's take a look at the actual tile. We're gonna show you kind of the tile, walk around, show you up close. Then we're gonna look at a piece of tile that has that backing on it. So this is the tile that we're using, and as you can see, it really looks like a wood surface. The thing is, is it's here to stay. No fading, uh, no wearing. Uh, porcelain is one of the toughest things that you can imagine. And you can see we've got a couple of little pieces missing here and there. We've got some pieces to put in. Uh, and that's what the guys are doing today. But it's all floating above a floor. And the fact is, before we look at the individual tile, let's take a, a look at what I'm talking about. You can actually see where it's opened up and these are all on pedestals inside there. So the entire porcelain is floating uh, about two and a half inches up on the outside edge and only about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or less. I think it's actually about a half inch where there's a, uh, like a ridge down the center. Uh, this is longer this way than it is this way. So there's actually a hip shaped roof on there underneath there. It drains the water to these outside edges. Now, uh, this allows us to have a completely level deck. The water runs into the cracks of the tile. There's no reason for any mortar. You don't have to worry about mortar breaking. Uh, all these have a little gap in between, and that's the way they'll stay. Anything that gets in the gap washes down below and goes away. So that's the actual tile. Now we're going to bring those rows of tile that you see up above right down the stairway today and uh, it's going to be absolutely incredible when we get that but let's look at the actual piece of tile here it is this is a paver tile now you can buy this in a thinner tile for uh, installing it in thin set but this is called a paver it's three quarters of an inch thick and then it has this metal plate adhered to the back and then it has the little joints so they each bump to each other keeping the same margin away there's also a track system that can fit in there. We did not need to use that on this, but the tile is incredible. Now, there's cleaning products that you can actually use to keep that shine that the water is putting on that right now, or you can let it be very natural in appearance like this deck is here where it's dry. Uh, either way you want to do that, all you have to do is clean this with a little white vinegar and water, and uh, you know everything comes off of it because it is so hard it does not absorb anything into it. We even had some rust stains where we drilled some holes over here and the guys left the shavings of the steel out of the steel post around and the rust comes right off. It does not 
absorb into, soak into. When I talk about pedestals, uh, this, is, this is kind of the standard pedestal that we use, and it is very adjustable. It screws up like this, goes up and up and up, and you can actually, I'm going to use my foot here because I'm holding the camera, you can actually pull this up, and there it goes, to the next generation. You can see how far that went up in a heartbeat there. Uh, and then you can screw that up and down there, so it goes up pretty high. Now inside that um, go these little um, separators, and this is designed to set at the corners of the porcelain. So you can see a corner would sit right in here, right in here, and this gives you the separation in the middle. Now, if you go right beside it, for example, at a halfway point, um, you may need to actually break one of these off, and they're actually made to do that. They snap off real easily. I'm trying to do it with one hand, a little hard to hold, but this little piece here will snap right off. So you can have the piece that is yeah, it was a little tough. <laughs> you can have the, the tile that sets here that's bypassing this, and then this fits your corner on the other way. And this is, this is kind of the common one in the areas that's thick enough. Here, now this one is uh, a little more than a quarter inch uh, thick, and that's just a plain um, pedestal that just is not adjustable. And so once you get down to this level, they become not adjustable. And then you have these, and you can actually break these down into parts. Uh, if you need to shim up or level that up, you can use these little parts to do that. So this is really the um, pedestal system that we're using right now. And um, it, again, it came from Embrico. It's a wonderful uh, product uh, to use. Uh, find it very easy. I love these where they're adjustable because this lets you level the tile perfectly with the tile setting on it. You can actually screw this up or down. Once you get them in place then, they're there to stay. And uh, we've not found any movement, uh, any kind of backing off of the screws or anything like that as we've used these now for a while. Now as you can see here, they will bring the porcelain to you in a large truck um, because they pack these in large crates. And uh, because of that, uh, you're going to need to be prepared for that when they arrive. Uh, a lot of the streets uh, and neighborhoods, they won't be able to drive down, so you've got you to think about that. We were fortunate to be on this project on a cul-de-sac that had a large enough turnaround and a construction site on that uh, cul-de-sac, uh, so there was enough room to actually turn the truck around. Uh, you're going to need something like a forklift, uh, at least a pallet jack. Uh, typically, they will bring out a, um, these products and have a lift gate on the truck. Uh, you want to confirm that. Uh, different, different haulers, uh, man, it's so hard to get good communication. So you've got to follow up on that, be very, uh, uh, very into making sure you know you've got what you need at the job. Uh, you're going to have to have a place to set it all uh, because they're just going to want to leave it on the street if you don't. Literally, they're going to bring it down and set it down. Now, in this case, we used a forklift and just picked it up off the back of the truck. They didn't even have to use their lift and so set it 10, up in the, the driveway, but it blocked one of the garages okay, for uh, a That's month and a high. half as everything was getting ready for this. So you've got to be prepared on where you're going to put it and what you're going to do with that. You're not going to be able to move it around easily. Uh, and if, once the forklift is gone, you're down to manpower maybe a cart, depending on what kind of a project you had. In this project, we had to go down a large flight of stairs, around and up a flight of stairs. Every piece was uh, hand carried, so there's some serious labor involved in, in getting that done. All right, now we're talking about the pedestals. Uh, the pedestals, as I showed you earlier, are totally adjustable, except for the very, very low ones. And uh, even those are a little bit adjustable because you use parts and pieces of a very thin piece, not quite an eighth of an inch thick, to make the adjustments uh, under one corner, under the whole thing, or you can stack them. And they uh, give some adhesive with those uh, so you can actually adhere them together. Uh, that way you're not um, worried about them coming apart and uh, getting your tile wobbly, and we've just not seen that a problem at all. Uh, but if you look here on this, you see on this picture that uh, you see um, a pedestal here, a pedestal here, another one here, another one here. 
basically that's all worked in with our offset on the tile. On most of our porcelain applications, we use what we call a bumper board. So I'm standing on the outside um, of the actual deck. You're seeing the porcelain, you're seeing the post and the stainless steel cable railing, a couple of chairs uh, beyond that. But I'm gonna drop the camera down very slowly now. Um, and so you can see the edge and what happens on the edge it just literally disappears. Now we call that a bumper board and it enables us to completely hide the pedestals and have a very elegant look on the outside. It just all looks finished. Now when the reality comes there's still a gap between so water runs down in there and uh, nothing is standing on top of the porcelain or running off the edge here. Instead, it comes down and out here. Now, this was set up so you could actually install a gutter on it, but um, I think we're going to all try to avoid putting the gutter on this. There's just so little water that comes out there. It's not a big deal. But the water actually comes out here. There's a spacer between the two iPay boards, the bumper board and the actual fascia that the drip edge comes over. things up in my opinion one of the most likely deck products that everybody's going to be wanting is going to be the porcelain paver deck the reason is because they are so durable uh, so uh, color fast that there's not going to be a lot of problems long term with fading uh, it's going to look the same it does not wear <laughs> Uh, porcelain is so 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 hard uh, that it just just will not wear and be a problem down the road for that so that's why people are looking at it unlike wood and I still am a real fan of Ipe and some of the hardwoods tiger wood uh, and some of the products that are so incredibly rich in color but let's face it there is a lot of maintenance to that over the years but you know I'm one of the guys who love wood boats uh, whether it's a uh, speedboat uh, from the 50s or the 1930s and 40s sailboats. I absolutely love those wooden sailboats. But maintenance is a nightmare and that's why so many people are looking at porcelain. Cost-wise, I just did another job uh, that we're going to be doing at the first of the year. And uh, porcelain versus Ipe, um, very, very, very close. A uh, little more labor in the porcelain, uh, a little bit higher um, than the other, probably 15% because you got more labor, uh, but the product itself, very, very, very close. So it's gonna be a good way to go. And uh, this is uh, our little input on porcelain tiles. I think it's gonna be great for so many houses. It's obviously not something you're gonna do for a rental house and that it's actually for people who want to live in their house and take a lot of pride and have the best product. Mixes real well with uh, stainless steel railing, as you saw on this job. Uh, glass railing, um, so many things that you can do, but you know, it is an upper end product. It's definitely more of the Lexus end, uh, maybe even into the Mercedes uh, quality if you've got it in comparison. In construction, I know that's hard to do, but everybody relates to it in cars is why I use that. Uh, probably not in the Ford and Chevy mode. Uh, because the price wise it, it bumps it on up a little bit but if you really want a good quality deck porcelain is probably the prime way to go. Mm -hmm.